Hello guys, my name is Russian Badger, and today we are talking about the class that was very frustrating to play in Battlefield 3 because, oh lord, that, it was so frustrating, man. Just, the aim down side spread and the recoil was outrageous, but in Battlefield 4, I think it's not only much easier to use, but it's also much more fun. And that fun begins with the XM25 Airburst, which I have fondly called the XM25 Fart Blaster, because there's no denying, it pretty well sounds and looks like you're farting bowling balls in a projectile format towards your enemy, but I think it's still very, very enjoyable to use nonetheless. The way it works is, you lock onto a surface like this, you aim around it, and it will explode three meters beyond it. And I know you've probably never really... This is such, like, I don't think I've ever really used a gun like this in any kind of first-person shooter, so I know it's a lot to adjust to, but here's another example. I lock onto the ledge, I aim above it, and my 25 mm gr millimeter grenade will explode 3 meters beyond it. It's not just a 40 millimeter gr grenade launcher like you've had in Battlefield 3 and every other first person shooter. It's not just something that you spam. It is very, very effective when used correctly. Like here's, here's a better example. Lock onto the sign, aim just below it, and it explodes 3 meters beyond it. Here's the really nifty part. You don't even have to see the guys to kill them. Look, lock onto the little ledge there. And I get a double kill while I can't even see those guys. And that's what's the most fun part about it. Not only does it sound pretty cool, but here's a tip. If you're going to go all Uncle Rico and say, I could fire an air blaster over them mounts, make sure that you strafe, all right? That's probably my biggest tip if you're going to go really ambitious and try to get, like, I don't know, some cloth monster 200 meters away on a rooftop. Just make sure that, see, he's over there and I can still kill him because, oh look, I created an invisible wall three meters away. That's that's the way that I think about it. You're pretty well creating a three, an invisible wall three meters behind your target as soon as you lock on. Here's a good example. I got shot in the face. I'm going to go ahead and lock on to the ledge. I had a little bit of a glitch where the night vision stayed on for some reason, but the point remains. Lock on to the ledge, aim above, and I get the recon because it explodes three meters beyond your target and it's very, very convenient. <clears throat> I have to say, it's also quite effective in terms of medium to close quarters. Like, I know this guy's around the corner. Surprise, Carl, and you're done. It's, it's very, very effective if you know how to use it correctly. The next point that I like to get into about the support class is that Use the ammo box, all right? There's a distinct difference between the ammo box and the ammo pack. This is a box. It will give you more ammo for your primary weapon, or any sort of weapon, for example, more grenades, and it will refill all of your equipment. That is a very important point. Also, the ammo box can also refill multiple people at once. This is the ammo pack. The ammo pack will only give you bullets, and it only works on one specific person at one point in time. That's why you can spam it so much. The box is AOE, and it gives you replenishment for everything that you've, that you've got. The ammo pack is just for bullets, and it only works for one, one specific person. I think that's the easiest way to describe it. So if you can, if you have it unlocked, use the ammo box at all points in time. Now, getting into the guns of the support class, I don't know how this kid got dunked on, but I don't know how you lose to an LMG when you're using the engineer class, but this is the way that I would describe the transition from Battlefield 3 to Battlefield 4 in terms of LMGs. I think that all of the weapons, or at least almost all, of the weapons in Battlefield 4 are good. They're easy to use and they're good. I just think that the assault rifles are better. It's not like these LMGs are bad. I still think they're very effective. Now granted, I like the Type 88 a little bit more than the U100, but I think in general, the LMGs are much, much more effective than they were in Battlefield. Battlefield 3 was just like, my recoil is going everywhere, and once I aim down sight after I'm done sprinting, my spread is just anybody's guess. You might as well just go AFK and spin your mouse around in a circle, because that spread was just horrendous. But I still do think that they just feel much hardier in this game, especially with the Type 88, but you can see... It's not quite the kill time of, of an assault rifle, but it's still got that same sort of damage model. You guys probably remember that. And this is the way it works in terms of, I, I actually really, really like the amplifier. You know that little attachment that you can, you flip it down to give yourself increased amplification in terms of your zoom. I actually, uh, for some reason, I actually like it. I was thinking to myself, are, are you silly, right? Why would you ever do that, bro, Cookie? It's like... You don't even need that. It's like a novelty. Are you actually going to use your little amplifying thing to enhance your zoom? I thought it was going to be a novelty and I wasn't going to use it, but it actually is quite effective, at least if you ask me. And I'll showcase that a little bit later on in terms of the Type 88. But the Type 88, at least in my opinion, is better than the U100. At least, 
it seems like it just because the stats that I've looked up are that the Type 88 has about 100 rounds per minute higher in terms of rate of fire with the same damage model. So I think you're really looking for time to kill. Like, if a weapon kills faster than another, you're probably going to want to use it if the recoil isn't too horrendous or the hip fire isn't like, oh my god, why am I firing bullets out of my hip? Why why are they like flying every, every which direction and going behind me? I, if the recoil and the spread are not that bad, most of the time in terms of LFGs, you just want whatever kills faster. And that's obviously the Type 88 here. I know that's very weird because historically in Battlefield games, the Type 88 has always sucked. It's always been extremely bad for some reason. But yeah, Bad Company 2, Battlefield 3, they were all, that was all pretty bad. But for some reason, here it's quite effective. Now, obviously we don't have much to compare it to in terms of I haven't seen obviously any other LMGs other than the U100. So I don't know if it's really going to be all that good, but I think in general the Type 88 is probably the way to go if you're looking to play with an LMG instead of any any other any of the other carbines, the shotguns, or anything else. And it just feels hardier. It feels like you're actually firing bullets that are somewhat accurate. And I think the sound is also too probably draws me to it. And I think the 200 round box is also too something that is much more effective than the U100. I guess if you're really going to go for that kind of capacity, why not just use an assault rifle? That's kind of the silliness, or even a carbine, at least if you ask me, because 50 rounds or 51 rounds, whatever it is, it's it's not quite 200, at least if you ask me, and it's just not quite as effective. And I was trying to get a little bit cheeky with this thing here, the air burst, just firing it from, from the hip, which is not really as effective. But I don't know how really... I don't know how good these guys actually are, so I'm not expecting them to just dunk on me every single time that I run up with them. So I don't really have a reference level in terms of if the Type 88 is better in close quarters. I would think that if anybody is really all that competent of a Battlefield 4 player, they will probably just destroy you with the Engineer class, the Assault class, etc. But I think for sustained fire, especially from a distance, the LMGs are very, very competent in terms of Battlefield 4. That's something that I'm very, very happy about because I really didn't like Battlefield 3 LMGs, they really couldn't compete with assault rifles, but I think they've, I think DICE has really put it on par, and they've made them slightly worse to the point where it's not like you're going to dunk any assault rifle you want, but here's a good example of the zoom that I thought. Okay, so I couldn't really see those guys very well, I put on the zoom, and I pick up a nifty double kill, and it is quite effective. You'll see that the recoil isn't really even amplified all that much, so I think if you do have the opportunity, Go ahead and use that amplification because it's very, very effective. Here, for this last little closing point, I wanted to see that will actually lock on from hundreds of meters away. So if you really want to get cheeky and get recons really, really far off in the distance, you actually can. But that's pretty well all that I have to say in terms of the support class. I think it covered everything that I wanted to cover in terms of how much I like it now and how much fun the Fart Blaster is, because it's a blast, all right? The Fart Blaster is a blast, probably the best way that I can describe it. But I want to thank you guys very much for watching. I will see you guys next time. Auf Wiedersehen und bis bald und later. Is he even pulling them up? Down here, right? Yeah, I threw it down here. What is wrong with your body, Kia? What? You're, you're worming your way around the map. What are you, are you a, are you a land shark? He looks fine to me. No, you are a land shark. I will show you this. <laughs> Kia, Kia, do, do, avoid the blood, please. It looks even worse. I, I wish I, I wish I. I feel like that's why this guy is staring at me too. I, I don't, don't understand what's wrong with your body. Like, is anybody? Oh, you're fine now. You're okay.